In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Microsoft Flow to parse text from your emails. So every month I get this email here from my web host provider, and it has the amount that I owe for my web hosting. So each month that's different because I use kind of a pay as you go cloud hosting service. And what I want to do is track that amount. So I've got a spreadsheet set up where I track my expenses from different services. And I want that number there to uh, populate in my spreadsheet automatically. And we're going to use Microsoft Flow to do that for us. So the first thing that I've done is I've actually set up a filter in my email service to take this email and put it in this website folder that I've got set up. And I'm on G Suite. And to do that in G Suite, you can go to the settings and in filters and blocked addresses, you can create a new filter. And I've got one set up that takes anything from no reply at close.com and it skips the inbox and goes to the website folder. And what we're going to be doing is using those criteria to parse out uh, text from those particular emails. So I've already got that flow set up and it's working. And what it does is when a new email arrives in my Gmail account and it's in the website folder, then from no reply at close.com and the subject is invoice created, then that triggers the flow. The flow then takes the body of the email into a variable, so a string variable. And then I've got a couple other variables that just parse out that string of the email body. And then the last step is it puts it into a table in my OneDrive for Business. So I've got this reporting template set up and the table in there that I want to put it in is called expenses. And I add the date and then the description is it's just for closed and the currency is always US dollars. And then I take the parsed information from my variables and put it in as the amount. So let's take a look at how I set this up. So I'm going to create a new flow and we're going to use an automated from blank one. So automated just means it's triggered by something. And the thing we're going to have it triggered by is Gmail. So when a new email arrives, we're going to select that and create. And here's where we can add in our criteria. So the folder I want is website and the email was no reply at close.com. And invoice created was the subject line. So that's what's going to be triggering our flow. Now we just need to add some actions. And the first one we're going to do is create a variable. So initialize variable. And it's going to be a string. So the body of our text, uh, body of our email is a string. And we're just going to call this email body. And its initial value is going to be dynamic content. So we're going to have it as the email body. And the next couple uh, steps in our flow are going to be parsing that email body but I don't actually know what the email body looks like because it's HTML. It could be that there's some other things in the way between this total and this amount that I want to parse. 
So I, I want to know what the HTML looks like before I start parsing things with formulas. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding an action, I'm just going to leave this as is, and I'm just going to give it a title. And save that. And then I'm going to test it out. And I'm going to use data from Gmail. So what that's going to do is look for the last email in my website folder that matches the criteria in this trigger. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to save and test. And it's run through the flow. And I can look at those steps and see what happened. And here I've got the body of my email. I've also got it in my variable here. And what I'm going to do is just copy that all and open up my text editor and take a look at it. So if I paste it in there, And what I'm looking for is this value here. So I'm going to go back to my text editor and control F and find that. And let's find all. So let's just go to the start there. The And maybe without that dollar sign there. And yeah, there we go. And then I can see that, yeah, there's nothing in the way there between uh, my total and 40, 47. And I just want to check and make sure that this string here, so total and colon, doesn't appear anywhere else in the document. And so I've only got one of those. So I can use that. It's a unique value in my uh, email body. And I can use that to split this uh, email body. So let's go back to our flow and let's start editing this again. So we're gonna add another step and we're gonna add another variable. So we're going to initialize variable and let's just call this one email step one and it's going to be text again. So a string and this time we're going to add some dynamic content. So email body and I'm going to be referencing this in my formula. So I'm just adding it in here so I can see what it should be. And if I hover over that, you can see it's variables uh, and then email body. So I don't need that anymore. I'm going to create an expression. And the expression I'm going to use, I'm going to use the split function. And we're going to be splitting variables and email body. And then we need to give this split function the string to split by. And in our case, we're going to split by total and a colon. And that's basically going to split our email body into two pieces. And the first piece is something that's garbage and we don't need it. And the second piece is the text that contains our amount that we're interested in. The, the second piece of this split function is going to produce that 40, 47, and then a bunch of other stuff uh, attached to that. So to get the piece that we're interested in, what we're going to do is take this function and use the last function around it. So we're going to take the last part of this split and 
and close that off. I'm just going to copy this because usually this won't work. So if I press OK, and this time it actually worked, but sometimes what will happen is even though you have a perfectly valid function, uh, Flow will tell you that it's not valid. And what you do is just cut out the formula and paste it back in there and try it again and it'll work. Now we could continue to parse this all in the same variable, but it's sometimes better just to separate things into different steps. So I'm going to create another variable. And initialize variable again. And let's call this one email step two. And again, it's going to be a string. And we're going to do a split function again. So let's go to expressions. And I just need to head back to my text editor and see what I need to split that by. So here, I'm probably going to split it by this dollar sign and then code. And that should be unique. And actually, in this case, we don't really care if it's unique or not, because um, we're just going to be taking the first part of that split anyways. So we could maybe be splitting this into two, three, four, or five pieces. We don't really care uh, because the first one of those splits is going to be the 40, 47. So I'm actually just going to split this by a dollar sign character. And let's go to our expression split. And we're going to be splitting the second variable that we created, which was called email step. And I need to put some quotes in there. Email step one. And we're going to be splitting it by the dollar sign. And then we're going to be taking the first part of that split. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste or copy that just in case it doesn't work. And here we go. Expression is invalid. Okay. So let's just cut that and paste it and press OK. <laughs> and it works. And now we've got all the information we need. So this variable here should contain 40.47. So we can save it and test it out and make sure that's actually what's going on. So let's test and use data from Gmail again. And then let's just take a look at variable three here. And we can see that our value is 4047, which is what we wanted. So that looks good. And let's go back and edit this because the last step we need to do is just add this into an, our Excel spreadsheet. So let's look for Excel. And I'm using Excel Online for business. You might be using Excel Online OneDrive. They both have similar actions. So let's add a row into a table as our action. And we just got to go through and find where we want to put that. So OneDrive for business. OneDrive. And mine is in consulting and reporting and report template. And then we got to find the table in that spreadsheet. So mine's called expenses. And then we just got to go through and fill out the fields in that table. So US dollars. And then for the amount, we're just going to use dynamic content of our email step two variable. When I first started this, I had problems with adding in a date. And the thing that I didn't realize was that I need to change my settings. So, uh, you know, that settings uh, menu up there and settings. What I needed to do was change my regional format uh, because that determines how the time and dates are formatted. 
So in America, they use month, day, year format, and pretty much everywhere else is day, month, year. And what that was doing was messing up my date. So even though I was on June 4th, it would be entered as April 6th. And I tried a whole bunch of things, and finally I realized that I had to change the settings for that to work correctly. So make sure your regional format settings are appropriate to where you are. And save those. And actually, I've already got it saved, so I'm just going to cancel out. And then you can add in dynamic content for the date. And actually, I mean, not dynamic content, but an expression. So there's some time functions in here. And what we're going to do is just add the UTC now. So what this is going to give us is a timestamp in universal time coordinates. And what I want is the timestamp in my own time zone. So we're going to use the convert time zone function to do that for us, to convert universal to Eastern. So I'm going to scroll down to the time and date functions. And this is the function that I want here, convert time zone. And within this function, you need to know the string parameters to input but I've already got those copied into my clipboard, so I'm just gonna paste them in here, and we'll talk about those in a second. And I'm just going to cut that part and paste it in as the first argument. So convert time zone, we're gonna be converting our UTC time, and we're gonna be converting that from Dateline standard time to Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to use the format year, 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 month, month, and day, day. Now, this here needs to be capitalized because that's for months. But if you have lowercase, that's for minutes. And again, I'm just going to copy that whole thing. Oh, I think I've got one too many parentheses. So let's try that. And there we go. And I can save that and test it out. And let's use our Gmail data. So our flow ran successfully and we can take a look at the fields that it created. So uh, the 4th of June, Klaus USD and 4047. And let's head into our spreadsheet and take a look. And there we go. So here's our new entry, 4047. And so there you have it. You can use Microsoft Flow to parse text from your emails. And I'm using that to automatically uh, create data in my expense tracking spreadsheet from my emails. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future videos on Excel. Microsoft Flow, Power BI, and Power Apps. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.